Hi folks, welcome back to the SFORM channel and thanks for tuning in. In this particular video I wanted to share with you my attempt to capture Comet Atlas that is currently in our own solar system. And I thought about mixing this video up a little bit, so first of all I will show you the picture and the video that I've made from the Comet. And then after that I will show you uh, the process and the software that I used uh, to produce the video and the picture. So without further ado, let's get into it. Folks, uh, so after showing you the results of my work, I just wanted to show you how I was able to capture and post-process the comet. Um, and I have to say, uh, I have been in lockdown for three weeks and uh, I've not been sleeping a lot because we had some uh, quite some clear skies in the Netherlands. So I'm, I'm looking a little bit uh, uh, sleepy right now. But anyway, I hope you can manage... Uh, <laughs> my looks and um, yeah i have to thank uh, race astrophotography and chucks astrophotography because they also showed me how to uh, how to do this so thanks a lot guys and be sure to also visit their websites and their channels on youtube um, so basically what you can do is you can go to the skylife.com and you will end up on this website and you have the current uh, locations of all kinds of targets in the night sky. So planets, comets, asteroids and so on. And you can see right here for Comet uh, Atlas uh, Y4. You can see here that uh, it has a current right ascension uh, location of 7 hours, 15 minutes and 9 seconds. And the declination at the moment is 68 uh, degrees, 29 arc minutes and 15 arc seconds. Um, and I'm using this information in Sequence Generator Pro. Um, I have to warn you, um, you have to have plate solving working in Sequence Generator Pro. If you do not have uh, set up plate sol solving in Sequence Generator Pro, I will put a link in the description below this video uh, and also somewhere here in this video so that you can click on that and uh, I, I explain in that video how you can explain, uh, explain, uh, set up uh, plate solving in Sequence Generator Pro. Uh, so after you have done this, you can just uh, make a new sequence, so file, new uh, sequence. And of course you can then uh, add targets to that sequence. Um, so in this case I have a target uh, named Atlas 2019, so when I click on the settings button here, uh, yeah, you can name, uh, name the target any way you like of course. And here you can see you have the RAN deck location, so the RAN deck coordinates, I have to say. So here you just enter, um, yeah, the, at the moment I was capturing Atlas, it was at 8 hours, 10 minutes and 36 seconds. And the declination was 68 arc minutes, 33 arc minutes and 41 uh, arc seconds. And uh, yeah, after you have entered uh, these coordinates, you can just click on center now and then uh, yeah, Sequence Generator Pro will tell your mount to slew to that target and it will also take a picture of the target and really center that target in uh, oh, that location in your field of view. 
Uh, and after that, of course, you can uh, you can go on and capture the target that you have uh, your mount positioned on. And uh, you can see here, this is my uh, capturing sequence. So I use my light uh, pollution suppression filter, which is still the UTEC IDAS um, D2. Um, together with my ZWO178MC planetary camera. And uh, you can see I have used 30 second exposures and I was, uh, I was intending to capture that comet all night. Uh, but ha halfway through the night, I, uh, I lost my guide star actually. So I ended up with 470 frames. Um, and actually I was sleeping uh, at that time. Uh, so I was not able to correct that issue. So I ended up with um, about five hours of data, if I'm correct. So 500 uh, frames or 30 seconds, more or less. And uh, yeah, next I will also show you how I post process those images. So hi folks, let me also quickly show you how I was able to uh, process all of the images. And uh, I used PixInsight basically for this and also a little bit of Photoshop as well. So um, yeah, without going into too much detail, be details, because that would take too much time basically, but <laughs> uh, you can see here my general process that I used in uh, PixInsight. So here I have uh, all of my light frames. I first calibrated those light frames. And for those of you who are unfamiliar with PixInsight, calibrating just means that you apply your flats and your darks to your light frames. So they are calibrated. Um, after that, I debayered my uh, images basically, so uh, PixInsight does not automatically detect um, colored uh, images of your colored camera. So you uh, have to go through this debayer process. And uh, then I registered all of my images. Registration basically just means star alignment. Um, uh, so you, al you align all of your pictures uh, correctly so that they match up. And uh, yeah, if you want more information on how to process images in PixInsight, uh, I am still learning myself. So uh, one channel I found really useful is uh, Amy's Astro. So if you go to Amy's Astro, you will find out how to process your pictures in PixInsight. Uh, she has some really useful videos on that. So thanks, Amy, if you're watching. And um, okay, after the registration process, I, this is what I want to show you actually. I applied automatic background extraction to all of my pictures. So uh, normally you would only apply your background extraction to your master image, to your stacked image. But uh, because I wanted to take a video, I wanted to apply uh, automatic background extraction to all of my pictures, my single pictures. Uh, so the way I did that was if you right click, you can open up image container and here you can open up all of the images that I just registered. So these are the star aligned images. So they are uh, corrected for flats and darks. Um, I debayered the images and I star aligned or I registered the images basically. So I, if I open up all of those frames and also of course you can then um, you can then here select an output directory. So as an output card directory, you can, can select a particular folder. Uh, let's say I already did that, of course, but this is the automatic background extraction also being applied. And for file name, yeah, you can, I think, just leave it as is. Um, and for the process, okay, you can then select the automatic background extractor you have. And what you want to do here is a subtraction most of the time. Yeah, you want to discard the background model here in target image correction, and you want to replace target image. You have to uh, select both of those uh, boxes. And what I found out is that you can drag the, this triangle down and then it creates a particular process. And on the other hand, you can also here drag this down. And it, it creates a, yeah, also a process basically. And then you can just apply the one to the other. So you, you just uh, left click and drag the, the automatic background extractor process on the image container. And then you can see it will run. And then it will uh, go on and apply the background, automatic background is extraction to all of the frames that you have here in the image container. So I found that pretty use, useful. I uh, will uh, uh, cancel this process for now. And uh, the second thing I wanted to show you is, um, let's close these ones up. 
The second thing I want to show you is, of course you have you work in PixInsight, you work with non-linear images. And I wanted just to make all of those the 470 frames linear because I just wanted to uh, use Windows Movie Maker or Photoshop to create a movie. So I need every single picture for that. Um, so what I did was basically I went to Blink. So when you go to Processor, Processes, Blink, Blink, Blink. Here we have Blink. So. I basically opened up all of my uh, registered and also the uh, automatic background uh, extraction applied images in Blink. Um, it will take too much time to open up all of them. Um, so I will open up some of them, <laughs> maybe it's these five. Uh, so you you upload the images in Blink and uh, you I was all already, and you can see right now, by the way, that I have a problem with my uh, amp glow and there was also a lot of light pollution. But anyway, I want to not go into that right now. But I, I noticed that Blink already automatically stretches your images. So uh, you can see here already uh, uh, an already automatically stretched picture of your uh, image. So you can see the comet here, the amp glow there, some nice star over here. And when you also click play, I noticed that here you can see already that Blink uh, makes can make a movie out of this. So that's very interesting. Uh, at least I thought so. And what I basically did is, uh, so you can here unstretch and basically restretch all of the images you have. Um, and when you have stretched those, you can just click here on this movie button. So crop and create video. And what it will do is, it will create a video ju you just saw, um, but you're not interested in that video, or I was not interested in that particular video anyway, because I wanted to further process these images. Um, but it also creates PNG files, so basically stretched linear files for all of your uh, single frames. And then you can just, um, yeah, I have, I have uh, selected like, a movie but you can make a, a separate folder for this so you can say maybe a linear uh, png images you can select those select that folder and then if you run this process uh, not only will pix inside or blink in this case make a video of this but it will also export each individual frame as a png in a png format as you can see right here to that folder um here linear ping you can see here that they are now you can open them up uh, with a normal uh like photo uh, viewer and you can see that all of the images are now stretched um so yeah that's basically what i and that also creates this avi uh, video we can also open up that video and you can see the comment moving basically so it's only five frames or something though right now. But yeah, this is what I used. And then I further post-processed all of these individual images uh, using uh, Lightroom actually. <laughs> um, thanks for watching. I hope this video was a little bit useful for you. Uh, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and um, hope you have some clear skies and hope you stay safe and healthy. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.